Hello everybody, how are you doing? This is Patrick from Vicious Computers and this is going to be a short pictorial guide on a nice little item called the Bliss Lights Skylight. A lot of people ask me when they see videos or pictures of my setup, what is the really cool thing that puts the stars on the ceiling? And it's an item I saw on Reddit under the Hue section or one of the other cool like smart home sections. It's really popular because it's not too expensive and it gives off a really cool effect. The reason it's not popular with the smart home enthusiast is because unfortunately it doesn't retain its power state. Meaning if you plug it into the wall, you press the power button to turn it on and you turn off the power with like a smart switch. The next time you turn your smart switch on, this thing won't come back on with the switch. So it's not good for home automation. However, there is a hack and it wasn't even, I didn't even own the item yet when I found out there's a hack. So on, posted that they couldn't get this to automate. And I said, why don't you try putting a rubber band on the button and see if that works. And they posted that it did work. And so that's when I went and bought one and I tried it out and yes, it works. But the button is a really spongy, crappy Chinese switch that just doesn't hold down very well, no matter how much pressure you put on it. So I decided to take it apart and wire in a new button so that I can override the electrical connection and then automate this using an external smart switch. So that's what this guide is all about. So I'll go ahead and put links in the description for the things I used and hope you guys can follow along and enjoy the guide and I'm looking forward to any comments or questions. So let's go ahead and get started. Starting off with our unmodified bliss light, it's really easy to get into. It's just a matter of a few screws, actually four screws on the side using a standard Phillips screwdriver and that will let you take off the side panel. Be careful, there's a couple pieces like the lens and stuff that are free floating because they're squeezed in between the two halves. So they can come loose and fall out. Once you get inside of the unit, you'll see there's not a whole lot to it. A couple of buttons on a small PCB, a motor to turn the nebula, a light in a laser unit. Lots of empty space and that's good news for us. So knowing that my hack worked where I just held down the button, all I did was I took a multimeter and I toned out the switch itself to figure out what contacts were making connection when I was holding down the button. Then I decided to go ahead and solder new connections to that button trace and then wire it to a button that I can override that electrical connection. So I'm just using these tiny little push button switches that fit perfectly. They're very easy to install because you just drill a round hole, nothing crazy like having to cut a square. Also, just a quick note, my original idea was actually to put a Shelly one in there because there's multiple buttons on the unit. One turns it on and off, one turns off the rotation, and one turns off the nebula and stuff like that. Using smart switches inside of the unit, I could have automated changing those features and functions, but I decided it wasn't really worth the effort because 99.9% .9 of the time I want everything on, so I just needed to automate the power button. And the easiest way to do that was just by overriding the built-in button and using an external smart switch. So here's the most important thing. The top left corner and the bottom right corner are where I decided to solder my connections in. If you take a wire and you touch those two pins together, it will act as if you press the button and it will keep the unit on when it powers on. So that's where we're gonna connect new wires and then connect those wires to our switch that we installed on the side. And here is a view of the location where our switch went or button. In this case, it's both really. And then you can see that was easy enough to install. Now I went the extra mile and I actually crimped connectors onto this so I can connect the button and disconnect the button. But it's up to you if you want to go that far with it, you can solder it or find some other way to make a connection. Now with everything in place, we just press the button into the on position and put everything together and it's ready to automate. Be careful with your cable management. This is how I routed mine. Of course, you might find a different way that works better for you. And then just carefully put the halves back together, screw it back together, and the project is complete. And as far as automation, use any external smart switch that you would like. So that's it. Normally I love to do full-blown video tutorials, but doing the video while doing the work was just impossible as a one-man show here. So the uh, pictures and the voiceover was the best I could do, but since this was a pretty simple project, it's more about the information and the concept. Hopefully everything was easy enough to follow and you find this information useful. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time.